Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Ricoh FF8WR. It's weather resistant, not waterproof. Uh, it was also known in some markets as the MyPort Panorama 28W. Uh, when it came out in 1993, had a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $149. Um, there was an optional data back it does the panorama via shutters where it brings it down and up and you just get a thinner slit on a standard 35 uh, millimeter frame. This switch right here uh, controls those shutters. It has a pretty nice uh, wide lens. It's 28 millimeters. It'll focus from 0.8 meters up 2.6 feet to infinity. It's not fast. Its uh, widest is f4.5, but at 28 millimeters, it's pretty wide. Uh, the manual, which amazingly I got, uh, doesn't give a minimum aperture or any shutter speeds. Um, other people have guesstimated that it's like the FF9, and that manual does give it, and it shows shutter speeds from one fourth of a second to one four hundredth of a second. Um, it's autofocus with focus lock doing a uh, half press on the shutter button. Um, it uh, reads DX encoded film. Uh, it'll read it from 100 to 1000. If you use a canister without DX encoding, it sets it to ISO 100. It's auto film load, motorized, and auto rewind. If for some reason you need to rewind mid roll, there's this recessed button on the top. You could use a ballpoint pen or paper clip or something like that. It uses the CR123 uh, 3 volt lithium battery. Not as convenient as AA's or something like that, but they're still pretty common and easy to find. It'll do auto power off after three minutes. You can tell it's on. It has this green uh, LED by the viewfinder. That flashes while the flash is charging, and if it keeps flashing, it means your battery is low and you got to swap it out. Um, it's automatic flash. It's a little bit weird. There's a red eye reduction button, which will do the pre-flash to, pre to contract your subject's pupils. You have to hold it while you hit the shutter button. Um, there's a flash defeat button next to that if you're in a museum or something like that. It's the same. You gotta hold it and hit it. And then to do fill flash for backlight and things like that, there's this button on the front and it's the same. You gotta hold it while you hit the flash. Uh, that could really suck, you know, if you were trying to defeat it and forgot in a museum or something like that. Uh, they call it uh, slow synchro in low light. Basically, um, it'll choose a wide aperture and a slow shutter in dim light, um, you know, when you're forcing the flash on. And in bright light, it does the same kind of thing. It'll be stop down, fast shutter, and flash. So pretty much it's doing its auto exposure plus the flash. Um, it's a fun little camera. I shot some uh, panorama with it. Um, I'll insert a still in the video. It has some panorama frame lines in the viewfinder. Um, they're not too intrusive. They're always on, but they're easy enough to see, but dim enough not to get in your way if you're not shooting panorama. The same for the little pill in the middle that shows your autofocus point. So I had a lot of fun shooting with this. Um, it's kind of an oddball. Um, did get a nice kit. I got the case, I got the manual, which I scanned and put over on the blog because info on this camera is really, really hard to find. Even got the box with the warranty cards and stuff in it. Um, so it's a nice kit. And it's a great one because it's weather resistant. You can, you know, throw it in your glove compartment and you've got something that's going to have some depth of field for, you know, when Bigfoot crosses the road in front of you. So. I won't do it right away, I'm catching up on these videos, but I'll uh, run another roll through it, and I'll see you then.